You may have noticed that earlier this week, I believe it was a Monday, um, Facebook went down, and WhatsApp and Instagram went down for a long period of time. I believe it was about six hours. It was the longest outage in Facebook's history. And additionally, at Facebook headquarters, people could not get in to their offices or their server rooms because everything runs on Facebook to get, you know, all the authentication is kind of run through the same system. So people were locked out of places. So regardless of whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that Facebook went down or what have you, or you were using WhatsApp or Instagram or whatever it's going to be, it did have a huge global impact, partially because many companies use Facebook for marketing. Um, we are on Facebook, right? So in some ways we use Facebook for marketing. Um, and it was difficult for lots of people uh, to use services that they use fairly regularly. Obviously, people who make their money on Instagram were having problems. People who need to call people around the world using WhatsApp were having problems. But obviously, this was a huge deal, and there was lots of reporting and, and people trying to figure out why. Now, it, some people have said that it looks like an internal attack. I saw, um, I saw that someone had said that there was issues with the code. But this has given fire to the individuals to say, hey, it's time to break up Facebook, right? This clearly shows that they're not responsible. And I'm going to make the same argument, but I want to do it for slightly different reasons. So lots of people are saying break up Facebook because, you know, it's, it's monopolistic, it's anti-democratic, and I agree with all that. However, the point I want to make today actually is not from necessarily a socialist point of view, but is from a data protection point of view. So... Facebook is a huge company. It runs lots of services, among them the Facebook social network page, Instagram, and WhatsApp, right? Now, usually, large companies that run lots of services for millions of people have what's called redundancy. And redundancy is a technical term from the cybersecurity world that says if something goes down, there's something else behind it to make sure that it does not actually go down on the front end, right, on the front side. So think about it as like, a backup generator for a hospital or your house, right? If the power goes out, you just crank up the generator and lo, you have power. Facebook should have this, right? But not necessarily for electricity because they didn't have their electricity cut. Um, they should have this for their servers and their, and their back end um, hardware. Essentially, how this typically works is, you know, Facebook, because it's a website, right? It runs on a number of servers and these servers are stored in data centers, and data centers can go down, it happens. Sometimes the data center is on a fault line, there's an earthquake, right? Sometimes, you know, there's some natural disaster that can take out a data center. That's fine, that's normal, it's not the end of the world. But redundancy is supposed to make sure that if data center one goes down, data centers two or data centers two and three are able to pick up the service right away, and so there's no interruption in service, at least the people who are looking in, right? Facebook users, WhatsApp users, and Instagram users. However, clearly Facebook did not do this. And this brings us to a conversation about monopoly and about breaking up companies that's important. These companies are so large that they don't really think that they're gonna get regulated in any meaningful way. And so they cut corners, right? And one of the corners it looks like Facebook has cut was to say, well, we actually don't have enough redundancy. So if, if something happens, and by the way, it did, we don't have any good way of building back our system very quickly. In this world, there is a standard that is set for how long it should take you to get back up. And typically the maximum amount of time that it should take you to get back up after an incident like this is about four hours. Now, Facebook was out for about six, which means clearly they violated the maximum amount of time that it would normally take to get a company like this back up and running. And they might push back and say, hey, we're a huge company, you know, it takes time. But the easy counter to this is Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram should not be running on the same backend, right? Essentially, if you have three giant services, think about them being like three different buildings. Say you own three businesses, right? You wouldn't want them all running on the exact same set of power and backup power, because if the power got cut, then you lose all three of your businesses, right? You'd want each one to have its own generator so that if, if 
even if they did all go out, at least then there's another layer of security, which allows you to keep your businesses, you know, going, uh, continuing operations, right? You'd want them to have individual protections so that each individual restaurant or business or whatever you want to think, however you want to think about it, continues to run, even though the main system that they were relying on, in this case, the power grid is down, right? So in the case of Facebook, their main, uh, you know, their main infrastructure went down. Okay, fine, right? Happens. But it should have been the case that Facebook, the website, Instagram, and WhatsApp had their own redundancy portions so that even if Facebook went down, Instagram and WhatsApp would be, would continue to be up, right? And, and things like that. Or the main issue, the main, um, infrastructure for Facebook went down, you could still run the pages because they were backup data centers or, or backup situations that you could use to make sure that nothing went down for a long time. Now, this type of redundancy costs lots of money, but obviously Facebook is a huge fucking company and they have lots of fucking money. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a big cost to them to do this, but clearly because, and by the way, there are guidances and rules about what types of redundancy you should have based on the services you provide. It's a long discussion. I don't really want to get into it, but what I will say is that there are there are rules, not necessarily laws, but there are rules around this type of thing. And oftentimes your auditors will come in and tell you that you're not doing something or doing something and they leave you a finding. And in theory, you have to remediate that finding. But Facebook is so large and so powerful, my guess is they just haven't been doing this which is problematic for a number of reasons, but most importantly, because it shows they really don't care, right? They, and like the whistleblower said in Congress, Facebook continually made decisions that put its profits over regular people. Now, this is another instance where you could say they've done that, where they have taken what should be a fairly benign, um, a fairly benign precautionary measure and just not opted to take it at all, which, is obviously very problematic for everyone on the front end, like me and you, who use Facebook for our businesses or our side hustles or our hobbies or whatever, or even just WhatsApp to call people, right? I have family um, overseas that I call and talk to on WhatsApp. Obviously, I was not able to get a hold of them. Luckily, I didn't need to get a hold of them for any reason, but you can see how it could be problematic, right? If you needed to convey a message and you couldn't do it for six hours, it's a lot of time. So the point I'm trying to make here is that one of the other reasons to break up Facebook is not just because they're a monopoly or they're anti-democratic or they are um, they're, they should be regulated like a public utility or all the other reasons you can give to break up Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg is a robot. Just kidding. He's not actually a robot. But you know what I mean, right? Like there are lots of reasons to want to get rid of Facebook's giant stranglehold. And I just wanted to take some time to add another one. Facebook as a company handles lots of personal data. They handle lots of business transactions and they handle lots of other information that is important for people's, for the continuing of people's businesses, hobbies, and what have you. It appears that this massive company is not interested in or unwilling to take basic precautionary measures for, to protect the integrity of that infrastructure. And because of that, they have proved that they are not responsible enough to have all that infrastructure at their disposal. The logical point here then is to break them up and to ensure that the smaller organizations that have uh, that result from Facebook being broken up are required to, by law, not just by guideline, by law, to have backups for their infrastructure so that we don't have another incident like this where essential services or important services or critical services, whatever you want, however you want to categorize them, are able to go down for such a long period of time without the public knowing anything that is going on. Millions of people rely on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp every day to do business and to do other things that are important to them or important to their livelihoods. And if it can all disappear without, you know, any information or any recourse, it's time for that, for the company who owns that to be broken up into smaller, more responsible corporate entities, or to just be nationalized in general.